So the FATF meets again tomorrow. The evidence is damning. Pakistan's record is poor. What is Imran Khan doing about it? He's playing politics, trying to fool both the FATF and the people of his country, trying to paint the opposition as the villains. The Pakistani prime minister has called a parliament session and he has come up with four bills to fight terror financing. But anybody who knows Pakistan will tell you this last minute legislation push is an eyewash. This is just for Imran Khan to show that he's doing something, that he's trying to change the system, but his hands are tied by his opponents. Let me tell you about the bills. Number one, the FATF-related anti-money laundering Second Amendment Bill. Number two, the Islamabad Capital Territory Waqf Properties Bill. Three, the Companies Amendment Bill. And four, the Limited Liabilities Partnership Amendment Bill. These bills are about terror financing and money laundering. The FATF wanted Pakistan to build legal safeguards to prevent money from going into the hands of terrorists. The Pakistani government came up with these bills but it can't get the parliament to clear them. Imran Khan has tried it before. Two key FATF bills were shot down by the upper house of Pakistani parliament in the last session. The opposition says Imran Khan does not want to fight terror financing. He just wants these new laws to target them. If these bills are passed, they say, officials will be able to arrest anyone suspected of money laundering for up to 90 days without trial, 90 days and the jail time can be extended at will, the opposition is not going to support such a law. The new session of the Pakistani parliament began today. Imran Khan has timed it just before the FATF meet. Like I said, he wants the world to see that he is doing something. The bills will be tabled before a joint session where Imran Khan has the numbers. The Pakistan government is yet to call a joint session, though. If the opposition stonewalls, the Pakistani prime minister will have an easy defense. He'll blame the Sharifs and the Bhutto Zardaris. He'll blame the opposition for Pakistan being blacklisted. But the question remains, will it be blacklisted? Pakistan has got three extensions in two years thanks to its friends. We spoke to Lauren Selin, a U.S. Army veteran who has served in Afghanistan, who follows Pakistan and the FATF very closely. And we asked him this one question. What will it take for the FATF to blacklist Pakistan? Well, I think it will take the members of the Financial Action Task Force to acknowledge reality. Uh, look, Pakistan has been on the gray list for over two years now and it has made absolutely no progress in reducing its support of terrorism. Now, Pakistan has done this because terrorism is an instrument of its foreign policy. The fourth generation warfare it uses is part of Pakistan's military strategy. Uh, in essence, Pakistan has been waging a proxy war against India and Afghanistan for decades. And it is a proxy war disguised as an insurgency. So unless the members of the Financial Action Task Force acknowledge this reality, uh, we'll never get to the point where Pakistan will be placed on the blacklist, which it deserves, because it's an epicenter of terrorism in South Asia, if not the world. 